We're going to be in the book of uh, Numbers, chapter 13, this morning. But I, I want to share an, a, another scripture with you. Um, that's, where we're go- that's where we're going, but I want to share this scripture with you. Because I, I, I want to set the stage this morning because I, I'll read the scripture first. James chapter 4, verses 2 and 3 says this. It says, you lust and do not have. So you commit murder. You are envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. And you ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasure. So there's only two reasons why we don't receive from God. According to James chapter uh, 4, verse 2, one is we don't ask for it. And the second reason is if we do ask, our motives may be wrong. That's the reason why we don't receive it. So this morning, I pray that our motives be right. I pray this morning that we get beyond our own circumstances, see that God wants to accomplish something in us and through us to reach a dying world for him. And that if we, if we bring our all to him, then we get all of him. He's not holding anything back from us this morning. And so this morning, whatever you came in here expecting, whatever you came in here wanting, I pray that you receive it. But we're going to be in the book of Numbers, chapter 13, and uh, we're going to start out in verse 1 and 2. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your anointing. I thank you, Father, that you give us ears to hear I pray that this word not be a tickling word word to our ear, but something that is deposited in our spirits that will cause us to grow, to cause our faith to expound. And Lord God, that you would do great works and mighty things through us because we are your vessels here this morning. We give you glory and honor in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Numbers chapter 1 verses, or Numbers chapter 13 Verses 1 and 2 says this. It says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send out for yourselves men, so that they may spy out the land of Canaan, which I am going to give to the sons of Israel. You shall send a man from each of their their father's tribes, every one a leader among them. Now, just because you're a leader doesn't make you a great leader or a good leader or on the right side of leadership. Um, You know, but the title of my message this morning is the power of perspective, how we look at things, how we view God, how we view our circumstances. And there's power in how we look at what we're facing, because if we if we have our heads so far in the sand, we can't see properly the way that God wants us to see about our situation. I want to remind us this morning that the Bible tells us that we are seated in heavenly places with him. God sits on his throne above all the mountains and all the valleys and all the things that we may face in our lives. And we get to, we get to see things from his perspective if we allow ourselves to see it from that. A lot of times we let circumstances get in the way. We let our own anger, we let our own emotions dictate our, our actions and our reactions to things. And, and today I pray that by, the, by the, the preaching of the word that you will begin to examine yourself so that you may receive all that God has for you. Because as you receive all that God has for you, then out of your abundance we'll be able to bless this world that that God's called us to reach. So in Numbers here, we we know that they came to the point of the promised land. Here the children of of Israel were where they, they, they had spent 40 years 40 years, and they're finally at the, at, at the place where they're at the footstep of the promised land. All the toil, all the, all the things that they went through, all the years of being enslaved and in slavery, 
all of the, the Pharaoh's army coming after them and God taking care of them, all of their shortcomings and all the, their complaining and murmuring and all these things, they end up, they're at the doorstep of the greatest thing that God called them to receive. This is where they were. They were at the doorstep. Church, we are at the doorstep of what God's about to do in, the, in these days. The, 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 this, this season coming into 2020 is the year of focused vision. That, that, not just vision, focused vision on reaching souls, of reaching the people that God called us to reach. But we first have to examine ourselves and make sure that we are where we need to be in him. So, so we go further in verses uh, uh, verse uh, 3 through 16, Moses begins to name all of the sons and the 12 that which represent the 12 tribes of Judah. Now the, the interesting thing is I want you to take note what tribe Caleb came from. And then I want you to also take note that Moses decided that he was going to pick someone and he picked a leader, and he picked Joshua. And when you find that, we find that in verses uh, uh, 3 through 16. Verses 17 through 20, Moses begins to instruct the spies, you know, what to look for, what to go in, what to, what to see, to scope out the land. This is what happened. But I, wanna, I want us to go down to the, the spies' report. We're going to be in Numbers chapter uh, 13, verse 27. And this is what it says. And thus they told him and said, we went in to the land where you, where you sent us. And it, and it certainly does flow with milk and honey. And this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who live in the land are strong and the cities are are fortified and very large. And, and moreover, we saw the descendants of, of Amalek there. Amalek is living in the land of the, of the Negev, and the Hittites and the Je Jebusites and the Amorites in the living, are living in the hill country, and the Canaanites are living by the sea and by the side of the Jordan. This was the honest report. This is what, yeah, the, it flows with milk and honey. Grapes the size of watermelon. All of what God promised them. But there also was the honest report of, yes, there's some, there's some giants in the land. I think a lot of times in, in the Christian world, we don't want to be honest about our situation. I'm not... Here's the thing. Yes, there are things that we face. Yes, there are trials and tribulations and storms. But, but the, it's the perspective of what we're actually looking at. We're not to be distracted by the storms, by the trials and tribulations. But we are to, be, we are to hold on to God's promises. He wants to give us joy, unspeakable joy. And so here we see he, he's given us, he, 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 the, the, the report was honest up to this point. But then Caleb gave this report in Numbers 13, verse 30. He says, Caleb quieted the people before Moses. Because when the people heard the report, right, they got all bent up out of shape because they Nobody told them that there was going to be giants in the land. See, it's what you don't know and your reaction to that which will determine what you receive from God. Because there's going to be some things that you don't know because we know in part. But if we trust in the word of God, if we know the word of God, if we remember the word of God, if we remind ourselves of the word of God, then we can receive what God said we could receive. So the people heard the giants of the land, and they were all bent out of shape over this. So Caleb, 
he quieted, quieted them before Moses and said, We should by all means go up and take possession of it, for we will surely overcome it. See, I, I come from the old school. You know, there wasn't a team that we played when I was in high school that wasn't bigger than us and faster than us. But guess what? We won. Because we never went into the game thinking that the team that was bigger and faster than us was going to out-hit us, outplay us, or have a bigger heart than we did. It's, 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 a, it's, it's about perspective. It's about executing the word of God for our lives. It's about understanding that God is greater, that, that greater is he that is in us than, than he that's in the world. But when we look at the world, you read the headlines, you listen to the news, you listen to all these things, the sky is always falling. We got a bunch of chicken littles out there. I'm not talking about the little sandwiches at KFC. I'm talking about people crying wolf, people crying things. And yes, there are, some, there are bad things happening. But I want to remind you that every prophet from the beginning of time looked at this day and said, this is the moment if they could live on this earth as, 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 a, as a human being, this would be the time that they would live in the greatest outpouring of God's spirit moving in the earth today. That is the time that we live in now. What an opportunity to reach the lost world. But as Christians, we tuck our tails because we don't want to wrinkle the, 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 the waters. We don't want to rock the boat. And so as we sit by on the sidelines of the river of life, we see loved ones suffer. We see people dying. We see people going to hell, not knowing Jesus Christ because we don't want to offend somebody with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you, if you look at verses uh, 31 and 32, the other spies give their report. I'm not going to, if you want to read that, you can read it. I'm not going to waste my time on it. I read it once enough, but I didn't, I, I, all, all I know is that they were more concerned about the giants they were more concerned about the obstacle than they were concerned about the word of God. So then, verse Numbers chapter 14, let's go over to, to, to chapter 14, verse 2. We see the result of bad leadership. Verse 2 says this, it says, All the sons of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, Would, would that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would that, would that we had died in this wilderness? Why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the, the sword. Our wives and our little ones will become plunder. Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, let us appoint another leader and return to Egypt. And here, Israel being the 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 type and shadow of the, of the church, we have the first church split. They decided that they didn't like how this was happening, how that was happening, and nobody told me about this. And they got their focus off of what God was accomplishing. He had brought them to the doorstep of the promised land. They got to see and see the fruit and the milk and honey and see this great world that God had prepared for them to have. 
but they were more concerned and more torn up and, and twisted inside. And if you go back to the, to, to the book of James, they quarreled and fought against God himself. They rejected his leadership. They rejected his sustenance and his manna. They rejected um, the, the, the commandments. But God, despite all of that, he said, if I, did, if I have a remnant, if I just have one, if I just have two, I don't care this morning. I, don't, I, I, don't, I, I hope every church gets a hold of it. I hope everybody gets a hold of it. But I know this for me and my household, we're going to look at the Lord. We're going to obey God. We're going to follow what he says do. He said, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He said, bring deliverance to those that are bound and oppressed and bring them freedom and love. God doesn't need everybody. He just needs somebody. And I'm looking this morning for some Caleb people. I'm looking for some Joshua people. And you know the, uh, the, the amazing thing? Caleb came out of the same tribe that the line of the tribe of Judah came from. Caleb came from Judah. Our praise and our worship. Our worship unto God. And see, so many times we, see, see, you have to get it in your mind, you have to understand, and I know some of us, this is foreign and new to us, but, but in the Old Testament, they, they brought their sacrifice that was unblemished, without spot or wrinkle, with, it had all its legs and all its members. It was their perfect piece. It was their perfect animal that they toiled in and, and worked hard to keep healthy. And they would bring that to the altar. They entered his courts with thanksgiving and with praise. But how many times on Sunday mornings do we lift up spotted hands? Because our heart isn't right. We're not right coming in with our heart isn't right before the Lord. Because we're, we're offended by, a, by, a, by something that's going on that we really don't have any control over anyway. They didn't have control over the giants in the land. But they had control of believing God's word that they could possess it. But they allowed the giants to dictate to them. To the point that they wanted to go back into bondage. And so the decision that a lot of us have to make this morning is whether we want to continue to walk into the glory of God or do we want to walk back into bondage? Do we want testimonies of healings of cancer and healings of, 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 of people, of families being brought back together? One of the greatest testimonies in this, in this ministry has been Mitch and Cheyenne. They're the, they're, it's the gospel of the folds. They once were lost, but now they're found. They were, they, 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 they were bound by addiction to the point that they lost their children. But by the grace of God, God took a hold of somebody's heart. I still remember the day that, that, that Dave brought Mitch to me and we were sitting in the front row of a church. And I told him one thing. I said, listen, I'll help you, but you got to be honest with me. Is that what I told you? Sorry. It ain't, every day ain't been perfect. It's part of my vernacular. But I tell you this, we sat with them, we ministered to them, we shared life with them. And right in this church, they, get, they got married. And God blessed them to the point that now they have their children back. They got their little ones. This is the gospel. But so many times we see well, there's mothers out there, there's fathers out there in those streets, there's people homeless, and we walk by them every day acting like we don't see them. You got business people 
Oh, yeah, they might be in their suits and drive their fancy cars as they go to molest children. Come on, if, if you had been in the news at all, you, I'm sure you heard, a, heard about the, the number. A, ain't no poor folks flying to an island to be with, to be with, 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 to be with young people. They need Jesus too. The, per, the, the person carrying the mail, the, the person working at the, at, at, the, at the restaurant that you frequent, the person at the grocery store. I know that I know that Stan's not here this morning, him and Etna, but I remember because I told God I said I, I, I you know he, he told me to give this trip away to somebody because trust me Kate and I would have liked to use that for ourselves. And and and, and, the, uh, and there was a challenge. Hey, you invite people. And I remember sitting right in my office and Stan telling me, he goes, "Man, I invite, I went to all my neighbors, and I don't think any of them are going to come." I said, "But did you ask? Were you obedient? Did you ask them?" And he said, "Yes, I, I was obedient. You know, yes, I, I invited people to church." And I was so happy when he won the trip, because it what see we, we celebrate when people come to church and, and all that happens but but we think that we're not we, we stop doing it because we don't get the results and the thing is is that we have to continue to to live this gospel out and be a part of it to the point that we have the answer so let, let's look at verse I'm, I'm in uh, numbers 14 let's drop down to verse 6 Here's where it gets good. Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of, your guess is as good as mine there. Okay, I'm not even going to attempt it. Of, of those who, sorry, of those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes, and they spoke to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, saying, the land which we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord is pleased with us, then he, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. A, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land, for they will be our prey. Their, pro their protection has been removed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. How many times do we rebel against God because of what we think somebody may say about us? It's not the devil wanting you to, to tell people about Jesus. It's not the enemy that wants you to be delivered and set free or healed. But we shy away because of what people might think about us. We shy away because of, of, of and I want to remind you of the scripture where Jesus said this. He said, if you're embarrassed, of me before man, then I'm going to be embarrassed of you before my father. But here we have Joshua saying, the Lord be well pleased. Well, what's well pleased? How is the, it is impossible what? Without faith, it's, it's impossible to do what? Please the Lord. And what is faith? Faith is what? The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of those things not yet seen. See, they were told, they never saw this promised land. But they had a vision of it. They had a word from God, an audible word from God that he spoke through Moses. And while 40 years in the desert, 40 years trekking across, never saw the promised land. And here they are on the doorstep. Here they are. They got to peek in. And instead of being enthralled 
with all that they saw happening, the majority of them allowed themselves to rebel against God. But thank God for Joshua. Thank God for Caleb. There's three things that I want you to remember. And this is what I want you to leave here today with. Remember, that's the power of, 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 per, of our perspective. Number one, remember what God has promised. Re remember that what God has promised is bigger than our problems. Promises are bigger than problems. Because there's not an issue that anybody's facing in here that Jesus Christ didn't answer on that cross. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So remember, what God promised is bigger than our problems. The second thing is we need to remember what God, we, we have to remember what God has done. See, the children of Israel forgot. They were outnumbered, outmanned, and overpowered by the Egyptians for years. And when they went into the wilderness with their families, their kids, and all their possessions, not ready to fight a battle, Pharaoh's army was coming after them. And how can, they, how can they get together and say, man, we need to go back to Egypt? They forgot that God had delivered them out of that land. You see, sometimes we're so busy looking back to the past and all the negative things and all the things that we, we're holding on to these things. And God's saying, yeah, there's, there's things that we could look back and, there, and we can memorialize those things. But we need to look at what God is doing in the now. He wanted them to receive everything. A land that was exceedingly and abundantly overflowing. Your joy should be overflowing this morning. Your, your peace should be, should be overflowing this morning. And I know there's times and there's situations that people are facing. But the answer is Jesus Christ. We have to remind ourselves what God has done. And remember, you may say, well, God's never healed my body. God's never delivered me out of this. God never. Pick a testimony. Because the Bible says this, is that what God does for one, he'll do for another. This is why we share testimonies in here so that we can rejoice with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Not to sit there and, and look and be envious about, well, who do they think they are because they're blessed. Because if we're, if we're, if we're, if we're not careful, we're going to end up on the other side of, 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 of the book of James. And we're going to be there arguing and quarreling and fighting. Because we're really envious of what God's doing for somebody else and wonder why he's not doing it for us. The third thing I want you to leave here with. So first, remember what God, God, um, ha, remember that God's promises uh, are bigger than what, what our problems are. Two, remember what God has done. And then the third thing is remember to be thankful. Our words and our actions are in an indication of our heart's condition. Our words and our actions are an indicator of the condition of our hearts. So if you can't walk in love toward, you know, people who come to worship God, how can we show love? I mean, th that's, this was the give me. This was the gimme. I said, I'll, I'll give you, yeah, it's easy to love the, those that, that love me. But he said, I want you to go and find people that don't. He says, remember, remember to be thankful. When was the last time you got something and it wasn't your favorite thing? We got Christmas coming up, right? Some people get some gifts. And they'll be like, 
have not even so I'm going to be with this. But if we're thankful, if we're grateful that, man, it's our perspective. If we're really grateful and thankful that somebody thought of us enough to spend their time, their money, their re- whatever it is, to give us something. Then, 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 then our, uh, there's a, there's a, it's more than just saying thank, you know, you can, you can, and you know, I, when we all have seen this at Christmas time or maybe a birthday party, you know, especially with little kids, because kids are just aren't brutally honest. Oh, that, it's, you know, especially at Christmas, oh, that clothes again, right? And then, you know, then the parent usually says, now you thank them. Thank you. Is that, is that thankful? Is that, re- I mean, be honest. Is that, are, are we thankful? If we're really thankful for, for, for what God has done. See, I think some of us, we, we've left and we've forgotten our first love. Because if we remember, God forgives us. We are the chief sinners of sinners. This is what the Apostle Paul said. He was the chief sinner of all. So how can we look at the speck in our brother's eye when we have a log coming out of our own eye? If we're truly thankful that God delivered us, then we we can look past people's faults and see that they're a soul that Jesus Christ died for. See, we we need to start to have a perspective from the cross. Here are the very people wanting to kill Jesus. And he said, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. I don't know how many times during a day I may pray that. I don't know how many times during the day that I have to get on my knees and and because of knee jerk reactions to things where I let my compulsions rule me instead of the convictions found in God's word. But if we start to live life under the conviction of God's word, we can make this world a better place. We can, we, we can really make a difference in the lives of those around us. If we really get a hold of God's word and what he really has for us, that it's for us, it's for you. And so many times we, we, we sell ourselves short and we sell God, God short and then we begin to rebel against him because we don't know what the word says. The word says you have not because you ask not. That's, that's the first thing. You, you have to ask God. And I don't know how many times I'm faced with a situation and I say, Lord, show me what you want me to do here. And then I listen. I read his word. I listen. And, he, and, he, and, he, and he'll show me what to do because God does not hold back his wisdom or knowledge concerning anything to anybody that asks. We need to ask God. We need to get him involved with every, uh, with every facet of our lives before we, we go shooting off at the mouth, before we go committing murder with our tongue. You know, it's more than just being a condition of going to heaven for ourselves. I believe that when Jesus told them, he said, you know, he said, bring me the fish you have caught. I believe that when we're in heaven, God's going to be like, the Lord's going to be, let me see the people that I told you to pray for, the people I told you to visit in the hospital, the people I told you to, 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 to ask for their healing, the people I told you to, to ask to be brought out of debt, the people that I told you to ask to be delivered. Bring those people. Bring me the people that you introduce Christ to there. Amen. This time, if if you're dealing with anything,